Okay, so welcome from the garage of Sentinel Primary Care. Uh, so, okay, this video, nothing fancy. We're not in the office. We have terrible lighting, terrible acoustics. Um, I'm not going to put in any nice pictures and, you know, do some of the nice video editing and stuff that I normally do because I want you to have this information as soon as possible so that you can act on it. And I want to talk about medically preparing for the hurricane. Um, you know, you sort of get gas and light bulb, I mean, uh, flashlights and all that stuff. But medically, medically, what should you be doing? So I want to give you a few thoughts that I have on this. Show of hands, how many of you were here for Fran in 1996? I was. I was in medical school at Carolina and it was a disaster. If you were here, do you remember that? So the eye of that storm came right through the triangle, which is what they're predicting for Florence currently. Um, it tore the triangle up. I mean, I couldn't get around for days. My car, my car was stalled on a street in Chapel Hill in water that flooded the car. Um, it was a mess. <clears throat> so I think as we're looking at this storm, I think we need to be ready to be stuck for days. Three days? Five days? Seven days? I don't know. How long is ele electricity going to be out? I don't know. But it could be a while, so I want you to be prepared for it. So I'm going to talk in three categories very briefly. Number one, medicine. So do you have enough pills that if you cannot get out of your house into a pharmacy for seven days, that you have enough? If you don't, get some now. Very simple. <coughs> Also related to medicine, do you have a medicine that you need to keep cold? Do you have a plan when you lose electricity and don't get it back for days? Maybe you've got a backup generator. Maybe you get an ice chest and, you know, one of these foam ones, put a bunch of, um, you know, the, the, the freezable gel things in the freezer so when your power goes out, medicine goes in the chest, you know, do what you need to to keep the temperature where it's supposed to be. Maybe you don't need to freeze it, but keep your medicine cold so you've got a plan for that. Third, what about medicines like oxygen? Do you have an electric uh, oxygen concentrator? Do you have big tanks? Are your tanks full? Do you use a nebulizer for inhaled medication that needs electricity to run? Do you have a plan for what you're going to do with these things? And again, same thing. Maybe instead of the nebulizer, you have uh, an extra supply of the, the pump spray medications. Or uh, if you have oxygen, you know, make sure your tanks are full. So think about those different categories to make sure you have access to medicine and a way to keep your medicine intact, so to speak. Okay. Okay, that's number one, and I think that's probably the most important thing. Second thing, a little bit of a notch below it, is clean water. Now, water's flying off the shelves. I'm not surprising you, any of you, by saying water. But, you know, I think it was in Hurricane Fran. I think in some areas the, the municipal water was contaminated and not safe to drink. And if you get E. coli from drinking the water out of your tap, you're going to get dysentery and you're going to come see me or worse. So you need to have a source of clean water. Now, okay, water's gone from all the shelves, so what are you going to do? Well, take the milk in your fridge, pour it out because you're not going to need it once the power goes out because it's going to turn to cheese a couple hours later. Fill it up with water. There you go. You've got a gallon of water to get started with. Um, so have some water ready. Now, you also could consider, here's where we come to my Boy Scout preparedness box, <coughs> which the, some, of the, some of the idea for this came from Fran. So in here I've got a water filter so that, you know, the puddle across the street, I can make this into clean drinking water. And if there's no water left on the, store, on the shelf at Harris Teeter, I bet one of the local camping stores has one of these in stock. And water purification tablets. This won't take pollution out of the water and chemicals out of the water the way a filter can, but it can kill the microbes. So it gives you another tool to give yourself access to drinkable water. Don't get sick from unclean water. Okay, and then the third thing that I'm going to say, this one's a bit of a drop in importance, but it, but it has a medical tie-in. So we all lose power. We lose power for, say, five days. <clears throat> um, we have no air conditioning, so everybody's outside. Everybody's grilling the food that's going to spoil from their freezer. And it's just rained a bunch, and it's warm, and the mosquito count is through the roof, and guess what? Mosquitoes carry viruses. West Nile virus is probably the best known of them. So the other thing that's actually relevant to have is insect repellent. And I'd suggest DEET, the good stuff, the chemicals. Um, because if the mosquitoes don't bite you, you don't get West Nile virus, and then you don't have to come see me or go to the emergency room. So those three things, <coughs> access to medicine and a way to, to keep your medicine safe and stored properly. Second is uh, a supply of or a way to generate clean water. And third, 
is a way not to get a, a mosquito carried disease because they're bad. Okay, I wish all of you the best of luck. Um, I hope you, you get through this storm as well as you possibly can. For Sentinel Primary Care, I am Dr. O'Connor. Mm -hmm.